Legends of Cybertron Reviews. Hey YouTube, welcome back to the awesome channel that is the Legends of Cybertron. I hope you're all doing well, and it is me, Alpha Prime 88, back again with another review. Uh, because I didn't do a half bad uh, review on this little guy, the great people at Legends of Cybertron who I am part of the League of, have asked me back to do a review of my DX9 Grimlock, also known as Commander Rager from the DX9 Pocket series. So I don't, like I said in the previous video, I don't own a lot of Legends scale figures, but when it comes to the Dinobots, they have to be part of the collection. So we'll start by looking at the box. So you had a nice big image of Grimlock's head. Looks like he's just about to blast flames out of it. You get a picture of the actual figure itself. Once you get the Warren pocket. Now I wonder where they're going with, with that writing style. I think they're knocking in the door of a certain brand. Uh, Legend, Legendary Heroes in your pocket. As I said, Dino Commander Rager on the side. Get an R image of the uh, Grimlock himself, very G1 esque here. But I absolutely love this artwork at the back. This is the main reason I kept this box. You can see, you can see their Constructicon. Uh, I think it was Hulky. I think it was called their con or Devastator. And you can see the other Dinobots all fighting and battling away. As Devastator was one of their big nemesis in the G1 cartoon. It's all like a prehistoric sort of background stuff, so absolutely love the artwork on there. On the other side, that same image again. On the top, you have Grimlock sitting down as if he's having a little huff to himself. And again, it's the exact same image as there. On the bottom, you have all your warnings and stuff, uh, small pieces, etc. So, that out of the way, now we can sort of Take a look at the accessories that he comes with. So obviously comes with his instructions which are very good. Uh, you get a little helmet which I'll show off in dino mode here for that one episode. In robot mode you have his little crown because Grimlock is king. Get a little sword. You can see it's done in a clear red plastic. Nicely done. And you get a blaster. A double barrel blaster. It comes up there. So there's no paint on it, but for this size of figure, you wouldn't really expect it. It's just single molded in black plastic. So figure himself. I probably say put this logo on him, sticker. The rest of it is all what comes in the figure. You have the red paint here, you have lovely shiny blue paint on his eyes which I really like it because it picks up the light really really well as you can see the glint off it there. Uh, overall I think a really nice well well coloured, you can see the paint apps here as well, you've got your green, your red and the blue. I think really well done figure. For me it is, and you'll probably hear me say it, say it in robot mode as well, Like it is just a miniature masterpiece. So articulation in this mode, you can open his mouth and you can even see the sculpt, sculpted detail. If I can get it with a light here, if you can see that. Just inside his mouth you have his little blaster, which they had in the G1 as well. Um, his arms, you can do the full 360 and it's on a ball joint so you have got that little bit of movement up and down as well. And back and forward so you can bring his arms in to hold something. There's nothing at the waist and obviously his legs can. If you can move stuff out of the way you can do the full 360. They go out that far on that hinge. You have got 
just above the knee, it's like a thigh swivel, just above the knee joint. And then obviously the knee joint bends forwards. I think it's starting to get like a dinosaur pose or whatever, but it's just the elbow joint for the robot mode. So can't bend it backwards. And uh, obviously it's the little slider joint for the hands, which you'll see in transformation, but it's unfortunately it sort of sits on the outside of the leg. It would have been better in the inside, but if you see with transformation, that wouldn't have been possible. So uh, you can see the paint here. Yellow paint is very hard to do on silver. As you can see, it's sort of muted a wee bit. Um, I don't know, you can sort of pick it up on the camera there. It's just not bright yellow. And you look at the yellow on the chest plate, which is yellow plastic, and the toes are painted. So if I can get them both in the same shot, you can see the difference between the painted and the yellow plastic. So I did say I would show off the little helmet and it's dyno mode. So you just pop that on. It's not a great fit, but it does sit on there. And from that one episode where he transforms his brains, to Computron, uh, to the Technobots, um, I think it's in the Rebirth, one of the Rebirth episodes if I'm not mistaken, I'm sure someone in the comments can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was in the Rebirth episodes at the very very end of G1 Season 4, uh, where he transferred his brains. Also, you can, as you can see this little peg here, if you wanted to, you can store his gun his back if you really want to. Hey, okay. it's an option. So, for comparison on in Dinobot mode, I shall bring in Cliff Jumper. I think it's an absolutely fantastic scaling. I would say bring in this guy. Hasbro's real Triad Legend skill, which is okay for Chug, but these little guys are like absolutely fantastic. If I was to redo my uh, collection, definitely would be doing Legend skill. Absolutely fantastic for the size of them. And just because I have them all here, here is Grimlock's crew. Let's zoom out now in a little second. Who doesn't like the Dinobots? They are fantastic. This whole set, absolutely fantastic. So, on to transformation. Whoa, oh, wait, just before we go on to transformation, I almost forgot the most important scale reference. There. Next to my G1 Grimlock. Now on to transformation. Ah, sorry, I had to do that on there. I had to get my G1 on there. So, transformation. Transformation is very simple, as you would expect with any Grimlock figure. You start off with popping the dinosaur head back, and then you can split apart the chest plate, which is quite difficult for a figure this size. You can't really get both your fingers. In the back of that plate, they pry it open, but you can see the little tabs here goes into those ports there. Now what I like to do now is extend up on this black hinge, it's like a double hinge, as you can see, then move the tail back out of the way, get the wing, the wing pieces here, up, then flip, show better here, this here comes rocks forward like this, Rotate the waist joint so that this bit's now facing the front. Then you come up and you have to get this little panel. And if I'm not mistaken, you can use this, this sword to pop it as it's quite hard to get to. And they actually, which I found very, very funny myself, in the instructions. They actually tell you to poke through this part 
to push the head and flap open. And I definitely need to do that for going back to dinosaur mode uh, to open the flap again behind its head because there's no clearance with the head up. So it's just I find it interesting and the instructions are telling you to do it as well with a little pry tool. So now that you have that little flap up, get it right up out of the way and then you can bring Grimlock's head up out of there. Put the flap back down and as you can see now you don't have a lot of clearance so you do need to push up from the bottom. Rotate Grimlock's head round to face the front and then what you're going to do is you're going to collapse sorry off camera so push the head down and what you're going to do is you're going to bring this up into this into the chest plate and that locks into place. Hold up the wings, come down to the legs, split the legs apart. You're going to open at this section, it's in, allows you to rotate the leg down. Then you're going to flip this bit in and then rotate it back in. And I just tuck the tail up like that. Then Rotate the leg at the thigh joint, bring the feet forward. So just do that again. Open here, swing the leg round, fold this part. You can move this tail tip up like this. Rotate this in, rotate at the thigh joint, and the legs are all done. So now you bring the arms down you using this little slider joint and get it so far and then if you can grab the hand and pull it the rest of the way and then rotate just above the elbow joint and that rotates the arm right same on the other side slide the fist down if you can just grab the hand pull it out a last little bit it's very very hard to get with this little slider joint. Rotate at the oh just above the elbow. And you just have to position the wing bits where you like. And that is Rager in robot mode. So here's Rager in his robot mode with all his little accessories for robot mode. You have his gun, fits perfectly in his hand. The sword, now the only thing about the sword is because he has this big piece here, the bottom of the dinosaur foot, you can't actually rotate the sword to go straight out the way, so it's sort of tilted just. You can see with the little design work there. And he has got his crown. I can't push it down any further because these things are sharp. Or you can actually see the little indents in the end of my finger where I was pushing it down. They are sharp. So just take off his accessories and we'll take a look at the actual figure himself. So, robot mode. Beautiful head sculpt. The only thing is the paint doesn't really pick up as well because it's sort of in behind that little cap bit. But it is blue, sort of metal flake or paint even. Very, very shiny. Uh, chest as is, just yellow plastic. It has the smoky clear plastic cover. And then you get all the stuff that transfers over from dinosaur mode, like on his legs and stuff. Uh, articulation wise, the head can do a full 360. You pin the, or put the wings back, arms can do a full 360. You have that swivel above the elbow. You've got a full 90 degree bend at the elbow. Um, the hands don't have any articulation. You can't rotate at the waist, otherwise everyone starts coming on tabbed. As you can see back here with the hinges, attaching from the waist upwards. Legs, you get the full range that way. 
and you get the full range that way. Also didn't mention that the arms, you obviously get the full, seeing as whenever they're in leg mode, you get the full up and down. Uh, knee joint, you get a full 90 degree bend at the knee, you do get a thigh swivel, and the most amazing part of it all, you get an ankle rocker. Obviously you can go right on past that, but it sort of breaks up the sculpt just there, so I like to just leave it to there. But that's an insane ankle rocker for a legend skill figure. Brilliant. Absolutely love it. So, that's Rager in his robot mode. So we'll do some size comparisons in his robot mode. Obviously we'll bring in his G1 self. So he's actually, actually ends up a little bit taller in robot mode than the G1 version of himself. Um, here he is with an official legend scale figure from Hasbro. And just to show off, that's a deluxe scale figure from the main line. Uh, it's my cup from my record shelf. Uh, so definitely not made for that scale. And he's bigger than this guy. And because I have him, there's Clip Jumper. I think this is perfect scaling. These are proper sort of legends. This to me is like a whole different scale again. Maybe a legend scale for them. Uh, I think these guys are better in scale with say my deluxe figures, my chug line. Um, for scale wise, although they're classed as legends, uh, legend scale in the, the main line, I don't really think that these really fit too well with these guys. But that's just my, my opinion. So we'll get down to my final thoughts. So final thoughts on DX9's Rager. Beautiful figure. Absolutely beautiful figure. Uh, mini masterpiece in my opinion. Uh, I think, you know, a very simple sort of transformation. But for this scale, the articulation is absolutely unbelievable. The transformation is fantastic. And I do, and I do really, really like it. I didn't really mention it. But he doesn't actually end up with the, the dinosaur head hanging off the back because it's folded into the actual chest bit, which I think is, you know, absolutely fantastic, beautiful way of doing things. Uh, maybe the car or Hasbro could take a leaf out of that book for that sort of thing for future. Um, so you don't have a dino butt hanging off the, or dino, dinosaur head hanging off the back. But all in all, definitely a fantastic little figure. If you're collecting lights and scales and stuff and you want a Grimlock, I would definitely recommend picking this guy up. If you wanted him a little bit bigger, I do believe Mike Fanstoys did an upscaled version of this guy. Uh, so if you want him that bit bigger again, you can go with that. But DX9, Warren Pocket, Rager is definitely a must have for a G1 style Grimlock for your Legends figures. So guys, that's in the review. Uh, I'd just like to thank all the guys from the League of Legends here on the Legends of Cybertron channel for having me back for another review. Definitely really appreciate all the great comments from the last video I did with the Cliff Jumper. Uh, it's been absolutely fantastic and it's actually got me back in the mood to do more reviews. So if you check out my YouTube channel, I will be posting more reviews again. So thanks for watching guys. If you haven't subscribed to this absolutely fantastic channel, definitely subscribe to Legends of Cybertron for more Legends reviews. Definitely the best place to be if you're looking for Legends reviews. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.